Hey, it's Ron with the Radiologic Technologist blog and YouTube channel. I just got back from a long trip to Omaha, Nebraska, where I was lucky enough to walk across the stage and receive my doctorate degree. I'm very excited. Uh, it took me a long time to get to that point, and I can happily say I've now graduated. Um, I'm going to answer some questions. I had somebody ask me, they're doing a homework assignment and uh, they have to interview somebody that's been in the field and ask them a few questions. So I'm just gonna do it on video because I think these are, um, some of these questions are common that people have in the radiology field. And uh, so uh, here we go. Uh, what made you interested in being an x-ray tech? So 20 something years ago, um, while starting to raise a family, I was in Phoenix, Arizona and I was trying to decide what would be the best way to make the most amount of money in the least amount of time being, meaning at least amount of time in school. I had, uh, I'd already gotten a bachelor's degree prior to going to x-ray school. And I realized that my bachelor's in science was actually a major in psychology was only worth about $30,000 a year at the time. And was very limited in what I could do with it. And, uh, uh, I was, uh, I think I was climbing Picacho, no, I was climbing uh, Squaw Peak, or was it Camelback Mountain? Anyway, I was, I was up on top of a mountain, and I was looking around at all the swimming pools and everything in, in the valley, and, and I thought, you know, the one thing that everybody's going to need uh, forever is going to be healthcare, because we all get sick at some point, we all end up in the hospital at some point, for, for the most part, and so I figured healthcare was the way to go. I'd always had an interest in healthcare. And um, so I actually started in phlebotomy. I went to a local uh, technical school, uh, took the phlebotomy course and actually enjoyed that for probably about 10 years or so before I decided it didn't make enough money. Uh, it was only like a three month program and it came out making like, I don't know, 13, $14 an hour. Now this was 20 something years ago, but um, I, I knew from that program that there was an x-ray tech program that came out around 20 bucks an hour after two years of school. And I, I looked, uh, you know, for comparison outside of healthcare, we had ITT tech uh, that taught you how to work on motorcycles, I believe it was, and it was a two-year program. And it came out making about the same thing, about $20 an hour. So, so the idea was what can I do in two years that makes about $20, $20 uh, an hour um, and then the further I looked into x-ray and realized you could cross train into CT and MRI and all these other things to make more money, uh, it just seemed to make sense to me that the most ROI return on investment was a two-year x-ray program. Um, and so that combined with, uh, I've always liked healthcare and medicine, is why I got interested in x-ray. Number two, what's your favorite part of being an x-ray tech? Um, I would say it's finding uh, the solution to the problem, which isn't always possible. But um, when I first started my college career, I, I thought I wanted to be an accountant because I liked having ledgers, working with ledgers, where if you were off uh, at the end of the ledger, you had to figure out what, where was that money lost at? Was it, was it in the credits or debits or where was it at? And so the challenge to me that has always kind of drawn me as solving problems. And, and I find in healthcare, um, it's very challenging to find the solution to the problem or even figure out what the problem exactly is. So x-ray, what I like about being an x-ray tech is a person can come in with a, uh, a problem and not really know what it is. They can tell you where it hurts. Um, and then you take your x-ray and, and you can you know maybe find out if there's a fracture or dislocation or foreign object or whatever it is. Uh, and, I, and I find that satisfying. Um, my least, number three, what is my least favorite thing about being an x-ray tech? Uh, it was probably the procedures that were gross, you know, like the barium minimas. Um, I, never, I never cared much for uh, small bowel follow-throughs or upper GIs. Um, that was probably, you know, I never had to do a fecogram or anything like that. Uh, uh, so an x-ray, now you get me an ultrasound and we'll talk about rectal abscesses, but in an x-ray, I would say my least favorite was probably just the BEs because they, they weren't comfortable for anybody. And, and if you don't uh, extract the, uh, 
the tip just right, you can have a huge mess and, and techs know what I'm talking about, but um, that was probably my least favorite thing. Is there anything you were surprised about once you got into the career? Um, well, you know, schools don't tell you a lot of it um, until you're in it, right? So x-ray time, I didn't know anything about barium minimus until I was in the program. Um, I didn't know anything about hysterosalpingograms until I was in the program. Um, same thing with ultrasound. I, I didn't know we were going to be doing uh, transvaginal exams until I was in the program. Um, so uh, anything you're surprised about, I, I would say, I would say, you know, there, there's a, a, a definite higher level of invasiveness uh, that imaging uh, gets into um, that you maybe aren't quite aware of uh, from the outside but before you start. Um, and let's see, uh, number five, is there a typical day? If so, what does that look like? If not, can you provide an example of a day in the life? Well, you know, it depends on what you do. So we're talking about x-ray here, um, but it depends on if you're in the hospital or an outpatient clinic or a doctor's office. Uh, so there's a lot of different scenarios there. Um, let's just go with a hospital. Uh, a typical day would be that you come in, if you're on the day shift and there's day shift and swing shift and night shift. Um, let's just say you're on the day shift, you come in, uh, you change into your scrubs and you report to your area at the beginning of your shift. You're gonna um, check your orders for the day and kind of look over what's coming down from the floor because those are kind of scheduled. Um, and you have to triage everybody because some have to be timed, uh, some can come down whenever, uh, some have to be done before surgery, uh, different, different things um, lead to different levels of triaging. So you start out your day kind of looking at all the orders and seeing where you can fit things in, in at. Um, and then you look at your um, outpatients that are out in the lobby uh, and the schedule of what's coming in from the outpatient and, and pretty much just kind of try to gauge how your day is gonna go. Um, and you know it never goes as planned and something always bumps you off schedule and the emergency room is you know completely un, unplanned. So. Um, I'd say a typical day is just trying to get everybody done on time to the best of your ability while fitting in all the unexpected to the best of your ability. And at the end of the day, just kind of restocking the rooms with, with sheets and, and gowns and supplies and uh, getting it ready for the next shift. And, and that's kind of a typical day in the hospital. Number six, uh, what kind of facility do you work in? Hospital, small clinic, traveling? Have you worked in different types of facilities? If so, which is your favorite? So, um, yeah, I've done a little bit of everything. So my, my favorite would be the small uh, critical access hospital, CAH call hospitals, we call them. Um, you know, a little 30 bed where they have 10 beds in the ER, 10 beds on the floor and 10 beds in the ICU. I like those because you, you really, you can kind of actually get a feel after a while of what's going on in the entire hospital. Um, you, you can walk in and relieve the shift before you and get a report on what's going on. And, um, you know, after you've been working there for a while, you know who's in the ICU, you know, you know the nursing staff and, and who the patients are because you most likely got the patient through the ED the day before and then they got admitted to the ICU and now they're in the ICU for a while and you're doing daily portables on them. So, you know, I, I find that the bigger hospitals, you just kind of... Um, it's not the old cliche of you're just a number kind of a thing, uh, but you don't really know what all's going on everywhere. And you, you're just kind of handling things one item at a time, one patient at a time, one exam at a time, where in, in smaller critical access hospitals, um, you tend to know not just the patients, but all, all the staff. And um, it just seems to flow a lot better to me. Um, and I've done some traveling. Uh, it makes more money. Uh, but you, you have to be prepared to kind of uh, roll with it, go with the flow, so to speak. There are people will say, you know, well, the way we do it here is, and, and you know that there might be a better way to do it, but there's no point in trying to explain that to somebody who works there and has been there forever. And, and you've been to, you know, 10 different facilities and you know that it works better your way, but you, you just do it their way to appease them. So my, my uh, favorite out of big and small hospitals and, and traveling would be the smaller hospitals. Uh, number seven, are you satisfied in your career choice? Yes, I, I promote radiology 
pretty much full time because it's been very good to me. Uh, in 20 years, I've gone from x-ray tech to the system director of an entire hospital system. Um, and uh, that career has allowed me to do that, really. The career uh, by working night shifts at certain times allowed me to get homework done uh, in between patients instead of taking time away from family to do it. And uh, certain hospitals with the right administration have allowed me to cross train when not, not all facilities will do that for you. And so um, I'm very satisfied with the career choice and uh, happy I got into radiology and, and enjoy sharing what I know now with people that are interested in radiology because there, there's so much of it that you don't know until you're in it. Um, and that's what a lot of my videos on my YouTube channel explain that you, you really have no idea how much money you can make in this field and all the different ways you can make money until you're in it, uh, you know, being on call and, and doing callbacks and picking up extra shifts and doing different shifts and holiday pay and double pay and time and a half and all that stuff. It's, it's really a fascinating career option. That's very lucrative. Uh, number eight, are there any professional journals that you have found helpful or interesting as a rad tech? Well, I'm a proponent of um, the AHRA. It's the uh, radiology management um, organization. And it, it doesn't appeal a lot to beginning x-ray techs because uh, it does have a lot of management stuff in it. Um, but if, if you want to understand how it all works and why we do what we do as x-ray techs, it's all in the management stuff. Um, but I also promote, you know, the ARRT and the ASRT and the uh, uh, ACR. They have, you know, they have a big say in what we do. Um, uh, I don't read a lot of the journals per se, because I mean, I get as a manager, you get like 20 different magazines uh, every month from all over the place. So you got to be kind of picky, but I get most of my, most of my news actually from antmini.com and uh, some of the vendor websites, CareStream and Siemens and GE and stuff like that. Um, nine, anything you'd like to share about the profession, something cool or unique you've learned or experienced or any advice for someone entering the field? Um, I would say just, you know, Keep your eyes open and observe what everybody else is doing and, and, and who seems happy and who doesn't. Uh, and you'll start to kind of pick up, you know, MRI, for example, MRI techs uh, tend to be in one area all day long. They sit a lot. Um, uh, you know, they have to sit behind their control panel and watch the patient through the observation window. And exams can take 45 minutes to two hours each where x-ray uh, techs are up and hopping around and, and moving a lot and, and uh, probably, you know, wearing uh, uh, pedometers showing how many steps, you know, when Fitbits were the big thing, everybody had a Fitbit on and we were comparing how many steps we were taking uh, because we were just moving around so much. X-ray is all over the, you know, the whole hospital. X-ray goes to every floor. Um, they do portables, the, the, they take a portable x-ray machine to all the units. They bring patients into the x-ray department. Uh, sometimes there's x-ray rooms in the emergency room and you take the ER patients there. So x-rays everywhere. Ultrasound tends to sit a lot that, you know, they scan their patients at the bedside, whether it's in the ultrasound room or portably, because you can take an ultrasound machine to the patient's room or to the ER. So ultrasound, you know, sits around on ultrasound you have to hold your, hold your uh, transducer and, and pinch and squeeze and turn and, and get on the other side of the patient. So they, they have shoulders that go out and elbows that go out and carpal tunnel sets in uh, where you don't see that in the other modalities. Um, uh, MRIs, it's back. CT, it's back because you're lifting and pulling patients back and forth. CT is, CT is a good mixture of MR and x-ray because they move patients a lot and they're up and out of the chair a lot. In fact, they're up and out of the chair every exam, which could be every five minutes, five to 10 minutes. So a CT tech will scan patients, you know, a lot in an hour where an MRI tech will do one every 90 minutes or something like that. Ultrasound one every 30 minutes to an hour, depending on what they're doing. Uh, nuclear medicine can have patients for hours. Um, so, um, you know, what, what I like about radiology is, is you kind of decide, do I want to spend a lot of time with my patient or very little time with my patient? Because if, if we're honest, some, some of us don't really want to sit and gap. We just want to do the exam and move to the next patient. And x-ray is good for that. And CT is good for that. But MRI, you're with that patient for a while. And ultrasound, you're with that patient for a while. And nuclear medicine, you're, you could be with that patient for, for a long time. 
So uh, radiology gives you the opportunity to kind of take your personality of what you want to do and, and how long you want to spend time with the patient and how much schooling you want to go through, how much training, you know, uh, MRI could take six months to cross train where CT takes three months. Um, then you've got DEXA and MAMO and IR, interventional radiology, which is more like a mini operating room. If you like, if you like to see suturing going on and, and tubes being put in people and biopsies and that kind of thing, it's more like a, a surgery suite uh, in interventional radiology. So radiology is this really cool um, department within a department. You know, there's about nine different modalities inside there. And then there's three different shifts in each modality. Your, your day shift work is completely different than your night shift work. Night shift is a lot of traumas from the ER because uh, everybody else is at home sleeping where the day shift is everybody coming in from eight to five to get their, you know, elbow x-ray who came from their doctor's office. And so, you know, I, I could go on for hours and hours, but this was for Kristen who's working on a, an assignment. And I just wanted to give my two cents uh, for her, uh, for her assignment. And I hope this helps you out. And if you have any more questions, reach out. And I've got articles, obviously, on my uh, YouTube channel and are not articles, videos on the YouTube channel, articles on the blog at the radiologictechnologist.com. We do have a great Facebook group up there um, that you can join, even if you're not in radiology, if you just have questions. Uh, lots of people on there answering questions that work and live in radiology that can help out. So I hope this helps. Thanks for letting me be a part of it and have a great day.